Hello and welcome to Ultimate Football History, where we look at the great what-ifs of the beautiful game and attempt to predict what may have happened if football had taken a different course. Like and subscribe to get more Ultimate Football History videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. And let me know in the comments what you think may have happened, or any football and what-ifs that you'd like me to look at. The Champions League group stage is beginning to wrap up, so today we'll be asking, what if the Champions League was only for the champions? From the European Cup's beginnings in the 60s until the late 90s, the only teams who had won their domestic league would qualify. The European Cup was rebranded as the Champions League in the early 90s, but still followed this rule for several more years. It was only in the 97-98 season in which teams didn't have to win the league the previous season to be entered into the Champions League. But what if they didn't change this rule? What if they had carried on making the Champions League exclusive to champions? That's what we're here to look at. Usually I would attempt to predict what would have happened, but as I have 22 seasons to get through, I'm going to take a simpler approach. For all the teams that would qualify, I'll simply order them in how well they did in reality that season. So if in reality the winners wouldn't have actually qualified, I'll declare the real runners up as the alternate history champions. If neither finalist would qualify, I'll choose the semi-finalist that lost to the eventual winners over the semi-finalist that lost to the runners-up. The European Cup and the Champions League changed its format many times before allowing second-place teams to enter. For this, I'll use the format of the Champions League in the three years leading up to the allowance of non-champions. To make this clear, I'll go through the 96-97 Champions League. Firstly, the current holders and the champions of the top seven leagues would enter at the group stage phase. If the current holders were also one of the champions of the top seven leagues, then the champion of the eight front league would get into the group stage. Into the qualifying round would go the champions from the leagues ranked 8 to 23, or 9 to 24 if the current holders were also domestic champions. These 16 qualifying teams would play two-legged tie to decide that eight teams would get into the group stage. The group stage is then seeded, with each group having two teams that went straight into the group stage phase, and two teams that came through the qualifying round. From here it's straightforward. The top two from each group would qualify for the quarterfinal, where it would be two legged ties there, and in the semi-final, before the final, with Borussia Dortmund winning in this case. So let's get started with 97-98. As you can see, Borussia Dortmund are top of the list as holders, and the rest of the teams are ordered by the league's ranking going into that season. So joining Dortmund at the group stage phase are Juventus, Real Madrid, Monaco, Bayern Munich, PSV, Porto and Man United, or the rest into the qualifying stage. As it's early on, this season is the only season since the change in which the four semi-finalists were also the four semi-finalists in reality. So Real Madrid beat Juventus in the final, as they did in real life. Elsewhere, you can begin seeing some changes, however. Rosenborg only actually got to the group stage, but in this format, as Bayer Leverkusen wouldn't have qualified, Rosenborg get in as the best team to be knocked out of the group stage. Similarly, Bonby get a place in the group stage despite losing at the qualifying stage, as they were knocked out by the team that went furthest, in this case, Dynamo Kia. Now you get the idea of how this works, let's run through the rest of the seasons. In the 98-99 season, actual champions Manchester United wouldn't have qualified as Arsenal won the Premier League in the previous season. Runners up Bayern Munich also wouldn't qualify, meaning Juventus and Dynamo Kiev, both semi-finalists in reality, become our finalists, with Juventus winning as they lost their semi-final to eventual champions Man United. Elsewhere, Barcelona, Ajax and Arsenal all failed to get out of the group stage whilst Kaiserslautern and Olympiakos reached the semis. On to the 99-2000 season, and we get our first unavoidable annoyance, as our alternate history title holders Juventus didn't actually qualify for the reformatted Champions League. This is the only case in all of these seasons in which this happens, so I've just had to use the 24 league champions. Again, it would be two defeated semi-finalists that would make our final, with actual champions Real Madrid not qualifying, and Bayern Munich would beat Barcelona. You may begin noticing that the quality of the teams is lower than in reality, because a second place team in Spain and England are probably better than the champions of nations like Hungary and Cyprus, who have qualified in this format. This may suggest it's easier to win the Champions League, 
but once you get to the latter stages, it will still be the top teams. And it can be argued it's balanced out by the fact that it's so much harder to qualify in the first place. Anyway, into the 2000-2001 season, and our ultimate champions are Bayern Munich, just as in real life defeating Man United in the final. It would be a good campaign for Deportivo and Galatasaray who fall short in the semi-finals, whilst Monaco, PSV, Sporting and Dynamo Kiev will probably be disappointed with their season. Again, the real champions were main champions in the alternate 01-02 season, with Real Madrid beating Man United, the English club's second successive final loss. Bayern and Roma would make up the semi-finalists, and Celtic become the first Scottish side to reach the quarterfinals in our Ultimate Champions League. 2002-2003 Champions League winners Milan wouldn't have qualified, making defeated finalist Juventus the champion, with title holders Real Madrid becoming runners-up. Valencia and Ajax would also have good campaigns. Jose Mourinho's Porto would remain as champions for the 03-04 season, defeating Lyon in the Ultimate Final. Interestingly, Porto are the only real semi-finalists to make it to the ultimate semi-finals as the top leagues start becoming increasingly stronger. Real Madrid and Man United would again make the semi-finals. Unfortunately for Liverpool fans, this format would take away their dramatic heroics in Istanbul as they would fail to qualify. Their defeated finalist Milan would take the title with Lyon becoming runners-up for the second year in a row. Porto would fall short of repeating last season's success whilst Verde Bremen would also get to the semis. Panathinaikos end Olympiakos' seven-year run in the Champions League, whilst Valencia and Ajax again disappoint. Into the 0506 season, a Barcelona remain as champions, defeating title holders Milan instead of Arsenal. Chelsea break the eight-year run of only Man United or Arsenal qualifying from England for our alternate Champions League as they reach the quarter-final, as do Rangers for the first time. And on to the 06-07 season, and Jose Mourinho wins the Champions League with Chelsea only the second time of asking, with the London club being the only semi-finalist to qualify for our ultimate Champions League. They beat Bayern Munich, just as in reality they would have done five years later. PSV and Celtic make impressive strides into the semi-final, while Shakhtar Donetsk begin becoming group stage regulars. Chelsea fall short of retaining their title and Premier League champion Man United finally win their first Champions League under Alex Ferguson. Fenerbahce have a good season, whilst Real Madrid and Inter look somewhat underwhelming. You wait 20 years to win the competition and then two come at once, as Alex Ferguson must be thinking as they retain the title with Barcelona failing to qualify, becoming the first team to do so in the Champions League era. Bayern Munich again find themselves runners-up. Alborg make a surprise appearance in the quarter-finals, whilst Galatasaray and Olympiacos fail to even reach the group stage. Jose Mourinho again wins the Champions League, this time with Inter, just as in reality, this time beating Barcelona in the final. Man United fall in the semis as they aim to make an unprecedented three in a row, joined in the semis by a surprise package Bordeaux. Olympiacos find themselves back in the quarters, as well as Romanian side Unirea Itzchene. Guardiola and Barcelona win the 2011 Champions League, just as in reality, as Shakhtar Donetsk make an incredible run to the final, the second Ukrainian side to do so. Copenhagen and Twente also have respectable seasons, reaching the quarter final. With actual champions Chelsea and actual runners-up Bayern Munich failing to qualify for the 2011-2012 season, Barcelona retain their title, beating Milan in the final. Incredibly, Apoel and Zenit both made the semis, whilst Man United feel they could have done better. Actual runners-up Borussia Dortmund win the 2012-2013 Champions League, beating Barcelona in the final, preventing the Catalan club from going one better than Ferguson's United and winning three in a row. Real Madrid and Juventus make up a strong semi-finals. Man City enter the tournament for the first time but failed to get out of the group stage. Bayern Munich win the alternate 13-14 Champions League, beating German rivals Borussia Dortmund in the final, with Spanish and English league champions Barcelona and Man United making up the final four. Juventus disappoint after failing to get out of the group stage. Into the 14-15 season, Juventus get their third additional title, 
beating Bayern Munich as Barcelona failed to qualify. Atletico and PSG do well, but ultimately lose in the semi-final. Man City have their best campaign yet and reach the quarter-finals, alongside impressive displays by Shakhtar, Basel and Olympiacos. For the 15-16 season, without winning La Liga, Real Madrid would be unable to win what would in reality become the first of three successive Champions League wins, and Bayern beat Barcelona to the trophy. PSG again reached the semi-final, this time alongside Benfica, Elsewhere, Chelsea will be disappointed as they failed in the group stage. With Real Madrid again failing to qualify in the 16-17 season, Marisa Juventus win the competition with a repeat of the 2015 final as Bayern reached their fourth successive final. After their Premier League heroics previous season, Leicester City have a great run to the semi-final and Copenhagen and Besiktas will also be pleased with their show in getting to the fourth final. Real Madrid finally win one of the successive wins in 2018 as Bayern again reached the final. The ship does continue to impress as they go one better than last season, reaching the semi-final. Monaco, Benfica and maybe even Feyenoord and Olympiacos will probably feel they could have done better. On to the 18-19 season and again Liverpool lose out, Barcelona go on to win as Porto fall short of their 2004 heroics. Man City have their best campaign yet reaching the semi-finals, whilst Real Madrid, PSG and Bayern Munich are unexpectedly grouped alongside Victoria Pilsen as quarter-finalists. And finally, last season's Champions League final is as it was in reality, but only the third time in its alternate history. With Bayern's defeat of PSG following, Real Madrid beating Juventus in 1998 and Man United beating Chelsea in 2008. Man City again reached the semi-finals along with Barcelona. Before we finish, we'll have a quick look at who would have qualified for this season. Many of these clubs are already out of the running, so you can see here who didn't reach the group stage. I suspect the favourites will be those top five sides, Bayern, Real Madrid, Liverpool, Juventus and PSG. Comment below who you think will win this season. Lastly, let's look at who are the biggest winners and losers if this alternate history was reality. As you can see, Real Madrid have been the most successful in this period, with seven Champions League wins since 1998, followed by Barcelona with four and Bayern with three. And here's how it would look in the alternate history. The first thing to notice is there is one more winner than in reality, but overall, four less finalists. So who would benefit and lose out the most? In reality, Bayern won three of their six finals, Whereas in the alternate history, they won five out of an incredible ten finals, including a streak of five in a row. Barcelona reached four more finals, but they don't win any more than in reality, although they would win in 2012 and 2019 rather than 2009 and 2015. In reality, Juventus have famously lost four finals in this period, but they would love this alternate reality as they win four times. Real Madrid fall from seven titles to three largely down to Barcelona's domestic dominance. Man United end with the same record, although in different years. Milan lose a trophy and Dortmund gain a trophy. Porto and Inter win the same years they did in reality, but Porto add another final appearance, and Chelsea still have the single win just five years earlier. Lyon reached two successive finals but failed to win, similar to what Valencia did in reality. PSG keep their sole final appearance, and the Ukrainian league has two final appearances, Dynamo Kiev in 1999 and Shakhtar Donetsk in 2011. Liverpool appear to be the biggest losers as they are the only team to no longer win at all from the list of real winners, losing both their 2005 and 2019 accomplishments. As they failed to win the league during this period, 2020 would be their first Champions League appearance in 35 years since the Hazel disaster in 1985, which caused English clubs to be banned from Europe for five years. As well as the previously mentioned Valencia, Atletico, Bailey, in Monaco, Arsenal and Tottenham all lose their final appearance. So there it is, that's what the Champions League would have looked like if they hadn't allowed teams who were not champions into the Champions League. Let me know if you think this is how it should be, or if you like all Liverpool fans, are glad they allowed additional teams into the competition. As always, thanks for listening, 
and I hope you enjoyed this look at an alternate Champions League history. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more alternate football history videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday.